Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Seeking What They Sought. I am one of your hosts, Anthony Leiter. In this episode, we actually take some time to talk about Easter, and we sort of ask the question, do we as Adventists even know what to do with the holiday of Easter? Thank you guys so much for listening and tuning in, and uh, welcome to the party. So it was just Easter this last weekend, and here's my hot take. Adventists don't know what to do with Easter. So by I, don't know what to do with Easter, you mean like, what do you, what do you mean by don't know what to do with Easter? So have you ever noticed that many churches, maybe two, and many to a fault, like it's, it gets too crazy, but most churches that worship on Sundays have like these really upbeat celebratory services that are, they just get so excited about the fact that Jesus is alive and Adventists are over here, like deep into like being solemn and sad. That's the vast majority. I've never been to an Adventist service that celebrated like, like even in tone, if not like, let alone being like churches that, that uh, worship on Sundays. I don't know about your experience, but that's mine. Hmm. I mean, I, I, my church, I, okay, most of the churches I went to didn't celebrate in general. That's uh, a good point. That's like a good point. The word celebrate involves dancing. And, and actually, yes, because there were celebration churches, and those were scary, terrifying, the devil lived there <laughs> churches. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, Jesse. I'm actually serious, though. Like, th- like that's actually. That's a thing, right? Yeah. I, yeah, so like, I'm looking like, church? like yeah. Pentecostal churches? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so so by celebration, you mean like just having a light, happy, cheerful atmosphere. The music is lively. The Like the, the sermon is upbeat. It gets people, you know, excited. What, what, is it, what is it that celebration means to you? Like what does that mean? Good what does point. that look like compared to an Adventist church versus... These other churches you're talking about, what's what's the different in, difference in the tone that you're thinking about? I okay, so. I, I have an example. Go for it. So I have some friends uh, that they're part of a church in Seattle, and for this last Easter, there were they had a giant barbecue, and there was a bounce house, <laughs> and uh, they did that. This is not this year, but the last one for the, so last Easter. Um, and that was a small. You're talking about up in Anacortes, right? Yeah, that yeah. was a small. Like what, under 150 Yeah, people. just a, a small group of people. Church, yeah. So like this was not some mega massive church that was like, was put on a $70,000 production. Yeah, so, and, and so I agree where Jesse's coming from. I feel like in my experience, and I'm curious to hear what you and Sean think, uh, Eric, but yeah, uh, mostly from my life, like I think uh, Easter, I have not seen Easter be celebrated in the same way that one would maybe celebrate other things worth celebrating, like a graduation or a marriage or like a birthday party, you know, like when I think of celebration, that's what I think of. Like, let's throw a homecoming party for someone and like everyone jumps out and say surprise and like. Yeah. And some churches get excessive. Like (laughs) there was a church that they rented a helicopter to drop Easter eggs from the sky. And I'm like, (laughs) that's wild (laughs) because Jesus (laughs) sounds (laughs) dangerous. (laughs) Helicopter crash kills, kills 14 children. Just like them are real eggs. (laughs) Hard boiled. (laughs) <laughs> but like I, they're, they're punking it's scrambled eggs the whole church. It's just oh, scrambled, man. Scrambled eggs from but i mean sky. like that's excessive right like where you're just like okay i i don't really see that I, this is exciting and hypey right but like it's not is it really necessary and real but just from the point of what you're asking sean if i have heard of like celebratory celebration type things yeah, go get your cat. What Sean, in the world? please kill the cat. <laughs> <laughs> She's hungry. Cat. She's um, hangry. If we're if we're talking about celebration type things, it's like yeah, you you kind of you, you you summarized it pretty well. But yeah, a light lighter atmosphere, less solemn, more celebratory. Like they're saying things like Jesus is alive, and they're cel- saying it like loud and excited. Um, people have a general like feeling of excitement at coming to the service and they're like yeah like this is going to be awesome jesus is alive there's a huge focus on like a bunch of people are going to come to church we need to be ready for them um 
And yeah, like it's just kind of a, it becomes an event. Whereas at Adventist churches, it was like, we find this to be deeply needed theologically, but like it, it was just very, very solemn and uh, yeah, like not, not very exciting. So would you argue like for the basis of what we're talking about, would you argue that that's a problem and it should, and it should change? Like, do you think that that's like, it would be better no, Sean, if I'm we did. I'm saying all of this because I think that Adventists absolutely should stay exactly the same <laughs> as they always have. I, uh, I, I feel like it's a pretty, to me, I don't know if in my personal experience, you know, we churches, I think, I think the thing, I'm just rambling here. Um, I think one of the reasons why it's not as celebrated in Adventism, maybe as Sunday churches, is because, you know, we celebrate on Saturday and, and Jesus is still in the tomb on Saturday. You know, so it's like, yeah. it's not the same, like, Jesus is risen this Easter morning, you know, like, vibe. And, and also, I mean, Adventists aren't like, let's jump up and down and praise the Lord kind of people in general. <laughs> No, absolutely. Yeah, and I think you hit on something huge, which is, and I say, it's like, Jesus is alive uh, tomorrow, technically, and we can't <laughs> gather tomorrow. And, yeah. oh, and this is a huge thing, is, and we can't gather tomorrow because that would be a Sunday gathering, and the yeah, Lord that's... forbid we ever gather communally on a Sunday <laughs> with the purposes of worshiping God. That's, it that's could be a, a work bee. Other... We can do an Easter work bee. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can clean the Jesus, attic. But Mary we can't... <laughs> came, Jesus was in the garden. He, she mistook him for a gardener. We're going to do the same thing Jesus <laughs> exactly. did. That's genius. I love it. We can clean out the, the crater roll closet, but we can't <laughs> celebrate Jesus' resurrection. <laughs> Actually, but Anthony, like, like I, in, in your, uh, it's humorous and sarcastic, but yeah, like, yeah. isn't that true? I remember um, people, people were uh, mad because they had heard that Alex Bryan, who used to be the, the university pastor at Walla Walla University, they had had a, some sort of Sunday service at a church he was at back, back out east, wherever he was. Mm-hmm. And that was like, that obviously means, and, and I'm not joking about this. Like, I know we joke about a lot of stuff, but people were legitimately saying, oh, that, you know, that means that he's an apostate, he's a heretic, all these different types of things. Yeah. Because he may have had a service on a Sunday, you know, or maybe even it was a regular thing, but, it, you know, like, as if, as if that in and of itself is is the devil's work, is having, isn't the, having a, ch- a church service on a Sunday. Isn't the hoity-toity theological word ecumenical? Yes. Like, yeah, and if you, like, like if you're if you're associating with other denominations and kind of like joining in for a cause or like unity. like like beyond I don't know it's usually the I ecu- think of the ecumenism is is a synonym for globalism in essence like what globalism is to the world where everyone comes together and forms one world government yeah that's what people are afraid with ecumenism is that how you say it which is in essence all the churches would come together and form this one mm-hmm. yeah so it's like the idea of like slippery slope like oh if you, if we do this one thing if so the context here is like oh if we did something on sunday that's a, that's uh, affirming sunday churches and that mm-hmm. would be the logic right that it would eventually get to oh well now we're becoming the apostate blah 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 that's the mm-hmm. that's the logic behind that thinking um, yeah so then what eric is saying it, it bleeds directly into that which is you know oh yeah like we we believe Jesus is alive, but you know we worship on Saturday, and Jesus is dead right now, technically in the story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, so, I, I I feel like as a growing up, Easter weekend there was kind of more of a emphasis on the crucifixion and the cross. Yeah. Than there was, I mean, there was. It's obviously emphasis on the resurrection too, but a lot of times, you know, there's like a Friday night vespers or something that's special for Easter's where we come together and we like do communion and whatnot but again we don't usually get together on sunday <laughs> well and if you're going to mm-hmm. get together on a friday that's the day jesus got crucified so what are you what are you naturally going to uh what, what's the natural mood or topic yeah. going to be you're not yeah. going to be talking about jesus alive you're going to be talking about jesus death yeah yeah and I, I mean i've done the same thing at, at our at my church in in uh in at north hill we've done like a friday night gathering where we focused on that um but, you know, actually one of the actual, like, logistical problems is we have a Sunday church that runs from us, so gathering on Sunday at, at our own church mm-hmm. would be impossible. But but for a lot of churches who you could join them. don't have that problem, <laughs> and actually, no, I've gone. I've gone to, uh, to, to Sunday church Adventists. Or Sunday church Easter services, not Adventist <laughs> services. Sunday church Adventist. Sunday church Easter services. Yeah, which means that I should probably quit right slip. now. And Sunday church. <laughs> <laughs> which, but yeah, but honestly, and actually legitimately in some people's, in some Adventist eyes, uh, that would be, you know, that, that would be uh, like going to a 
like for some Christians, like it would be like going to a, a, a gay wedding. It's like you're supporting it, you know, in yeah. essence. Like that's that's mm-hmm. the way people would look at it. Uh, even if you're just like, I just love the people, you know. Um, yeah. And or I I love what they're I love I love the event and what they're doing and and an Easter event it's just like this is they're not this is the, this is the most biblical like Paul literally says if Jesus is not alive our faith means nothing yeah, yeah. and so if anything it's like that that is the reality yeah. of celebration yeah Christianity Easter. hinges on the resurrection so and like Adventists obviously believe that like there's yeah. you know like we all believe that but like what you're talking about is the emotional reaction, like experiencing, like letting it sink in that truth yeah. and expressing that as a community. What, I mean, cel- what did you celebrate. experience, Sean? Cause like, I mean, okay. You, you said you kind of, I remember you saying you kind of disagree. You, you didn't experience that necessarily, but you're, so you're saying that you, you recognize there is the, the feeling of like, oh yeah, like we, we believe that theologically, but we're not reacting emotionally, yeah. but what was your experience? So, and obviously we're talking about our four perspectives, right? And we all grew up in mm-hmm. a very similar area at a similar time. So, um, I'd be interested to see like what other people would say. I would say for me, um, I never once in my life thought, man, we just don't do Easter right. Like as Adventists, like that never crossed my mind. Um, but as we, as we talk about it, I can, I can see how, you know, maybe as a church, we could be doing a better job of finding ways to be intentional about celebrating it. Um, but I wouldn't say that I ever felt like we weren't doing it justice with, with our church services. At the same time, I can see how you mentioned, like, it tends to be more somber. We, we focus on the crucifixion. Um, there's been individual pastors, whether it be Easter or not, that have focused um, on the resurrection and have celebrated that through a sermon or a talk. Mm-hmm. And I know Adventists that do celebrate it. But, um, yeah, I, I would say as a culture at large, maybe... You know, I don't know. Maybe we, maybe we don't really celebrate it as much as other denominations do, as other Christians do. But I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I'm not I'm not fully convinced yet that that's true. But the reasons you brought up. Yeah, they could be reasons why that that's limited us on doing that. Yeah. I definitely agree that with Sunday worship, like I've been to it's been a while, but there was a couple of times I would visit during college, different Sunday churches and and see what they were doing. And I remember initially, like in my head, I didn't think about it, but I felt uncomfortable. Like it mm. felt like this yeah, was no, not, absolutely. these are not my people. Yeah. And, uh, which is a weird feeling. And, and I even know some others at, at my church, at other places where they've gone to Sunday churches, but they don't always mention it. Or when they do, it's like, kind of like, oh, well, yeah, I was just going to check it out. Like you're still my church fan. Like they, <laughs> they feel a need to explain why <laughs> they went. They feel guilty, it's like you yeah. went to a bar. You know, right. yeah. like yeah. I was just there. I went there. I went there. I only drank so, water and I, and I hung out with just a few of my friends. That's so, it. That's so, it for Bible study. So even beyond this topic of <laughs> Easter, I think there is something to be said about that idea of like, can we just go worship with other people um, when it's not Sabbath? Yeah. Like, there's nothing that says we can't do that. In fact, there can be something healthy about that. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think all the points you brought up, I agree with. I'm, I'm still trying to wrap my head around, um, you know, what would what would we do better or what is holding us back from truly celebrating Easter? If that is really a problem. I, and That's I, a good question, but I, I feel like in my experience, you know, mine was similar to you, Sean. And I feel like growing up, um, growing up in Adventism, you don't really, I guess, I guess you don't really ask the question maybe. And you don't really know anything else, you know, especially when you grow up in, um, you know, an Adventist community like we did. And, um, I often tell, friends who are not Adventists, like, yeah, Adventism is like an all-encompassing lifestyle. It's, it's a different type of, uh, religion to like, you know, like, I don't being know. Being a Baptist. Yeah. Or being about, ba- yeah, it's sort of, it's, it's closer to like Judaism or like if you're, you know, a Muslim or something like that, like it's like your doctor's Adventist, your healthcare is Adventist, you know, mm. like when you, especially when you live in like an Adventist community, like a lot of the ones that we grew up in, there's like an Adventist store nearby where you get all the veggie food. You know, I've I've had an Adventist dentist my whole life. Just a fun fact, nuts? like it, it just like lined up that way. That's why. Like I wasn't I was not specifically seeking out an Adventist dentist. Yeah. In, like after college, it just happened. That's does wild. he call it, does it, just when he when he get when he uh, is going to give you your dentures? Does he call it the second coming of your teeth? <laughs> uh. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, he, and you know third. he Sorry, sings. You, you know what he sings. Teeth. You know what he sings. Okay. Crown him with many crowns. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, well done, Sean. That I'm, was, that was I'm, I'm enameled with you right now. <laughs> was... Well done. 
But, oh, but isn't that wild? Like how many like Sikhs or like, I don't know, you know, Native Americans have Sikh or Native American dentists for their whole life. Like that's pretty wild. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty random but so, i could say yeah, i've anyway, honestly sorry, never I, thought about that anthony <laughs> <laughs> all this to say i feel like it's it's cultural i feel like it's a cultural expressionary thing and i yeah. felt like i didn't notice the difference until i went to other yeah. churches so i went to non-denom churches and i was like oh wow they like they they shoot like 50 balloons into the air you know like when the church service begins or like everyone seems genuinely excited not like they hate being there like and I'm not and I'm, I'm and there's a there's yeah. and there's a problem where and we as we talked about earlier where it almost gets to be commercialized and hype driven exactly but yet the the I the 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 attitude behind it is what well to to me it's like you know the way you would celebrate anything that you are normally celebrating like a birthday or a graduation like you're excited you're you're emotionally stoked and um it seemed like in our tradition culturally we we, did, we we come from more ascetic or puritan or whatever you know whatever it is where we're a little more reserved a lot more like careful about expressing publicly like excitement joy exuberance you know well yeah. it's interesting too because like early adventism was crazy yeah it was yeah that's true it was nuts like you had people <laughs> like falling on the floor being stiff for hours you know like, like that sounds like, like a party just, it, falling on the yeah. floor being <laughs> The Adventists just were the planking. inventors of planking. Yep. <laughs> I really don't yeah. want to. Yeah. yeah. I, but like you, you, you had you had a lot of what you might call uh, Pentecostal ideas uh, or, or like uh, yeah. actions. Yeah, like charismatic. Yeah. Expression. Whereas it, over time, as Adventism became more legalistic and focused on rules and and keeping them, like inherently, what that that starts to crush out of you. Is any sort of emotional response because then it, it becomes really all about what you're doing it becomes uh, behavior driven as opposed to um, from like a, an emotional relationship from the heart mm -hmm. so so again I'm still trying to wrap my head around you know I, I don't think it's always somber at least again in my experience it's never been overly somber mm -hmm. um, yeah. but like in your head like because Jesse you brought up like it, it gets hyped up but so in your head, like, it's not necessarily just the actually how the service plays out, but just the spirit of the people going there. So not like having those balloons or having like something necessarily change in the service, but I feel like it's, both. it's just like the attitude. Is it yeah, more the attitude? Oh, so both like the combination yeah. of the attitude of the people initially getting there and how it's treated in the service. Yeah, I'd say it all sucks. So, yeah, <laughs> Adventism <laughs> is just. No, okay. Well, uh, yeah, no, I'd say it's both. Yeah, I okay. mean. I feel like what I don't know very many Adventist churches looking back on the ones I went to growing up that, you know, I could look back and say, I think they probably got together like the, the leadership team got together and said, how can we show through the service that we're excited that Jesus is alive? I feel like that conversation never happened once. And, and I feel like that's not, um, you know, just uh, me trying to be critical because I, I feel like that's just not what we think of. With so culture can I so but you guys would say uh, specifically Jesse and An uh, Anthony you guys would say because you visited other churches and viewed and saw the way they treated Easter and the way their congregation treated Easter that kind of changed your perspective about man we we don't really do this as well is that what you say would kind of that's what flipped the switch yeah you know like when you go to your Adventist school like your whole life and you're you just kind of grow up in it and then you go to this public school that has like millions of dollars in funding and you're just like, oh, wow, they have a really nice gym. And then you go back to your school and like, this sucks. <laughs> I was going to say, it's that. like, it's like when you go to your friend's house, when you go to your friend's house and they're Second. like, hey mom, can I have ice cream for breakfast? And their, their mom's like, yeah, sure, honey. And I'm like, my mom would rather die than give me ice cream for breakfast. <laughs> It's like Vegetables. that. Vegetables. <laughs> so, okay. My, my follow-up question. Here's a single asparagus. asparagus. <laughs> So here's my, my follow-up question to Jesse and Anthony is, since you've experienced that, has that informed or changed, since you've both been pastors, has that changed how you viewed in your churches what Easter should be? Mm. Uh, yeah, I think I think the problem is still in my own head. I don't think it's actually with my church. My church was pretty pretty progressive and would, would, would go with a lot of different things. It's the church Eric grew up in, so that also has, I think, probably some some bearing on how you've experienced it, Eric. Um, but, uh, yeah. So like, I, I think that it's actually more in my head of like, 
I don't even know what to do with this. <laughs> Actually, uh, the, the church that runs from us, I'm pretty good friends with the pastor. Uh, his name is Dan. He's a four square pastor. They're pretty Pentecostal. And, uh, I'm good friends with the guy and he, you know, he'll ask me like, Oh, what are you guys doing for Easter? And I'm like, what do you do for Easter? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like they'll have plays. They, they go all out. They do this amazing stuff. And it's not that e- like every church, uh, does it poorly. I actually just saw, I don't remember who it was, but I saw it during this COVID-19 crisis and not having, you know, church, uh, on location, they had a drive through, this is Adventist church. Um, they had a drive through where people could come pick up a bouquet of flowers and put it on a cross. And so it's really cool. At the end of the, the end of the thing was the cross it just it looks beautiful, uh, with a bunch of, of like spring flowers on it. Mm. Um, and I've seen that done in church, but it was really cool cause they did it you know, in, in the context of the, the not having church on location. But the reason I bring it up is because people, well, it's not like Adventists don't have semblance of it, semblances of it. And maybe we're getting better at it. But I think that like the overall feeling behind, oh, Easter is it's, it's cut short of what it sh- should be and could be in essence because of, I mean, first and foremost, I think it's because of the day we're on Saturday. So it's a little bit hard to get excited about that. But then second, I think it does have something to do with theology Yeah, that, that we've, we've never really looked at the resurrection as the main, like, st- like the main point of celebration. I- if anything, the things that were more pushed overall in church were behavioral things. And the resurrection does not really have much to do with your behavior. Or at best, the- like, theological things, like the second coming, state of the dead. Yeah. Like those things were celebrated, in, at, at least so as far when, as Adventist identity. So when you identity. get to Easter, you're just like, yeah, Jesus is alive. Okay, I'm going to go back to being, you know, the, the good Adventist that I was. So let me ask a... That's, maybe that's the feeling. Is this a weird question? Maybe this is totally off base. Do you think it our focus? Is. Do you think our focus on the second coming distracts us from the resurrection so much i do yeah because you know like it's written in our name like we're we're very like that's a big part of our identity as adventists is the second coming like that's happening not only it's happening but we believe it's happening soon which is a whole other topic but it is but again like that's our hope that's where we celebrate as adventists would that make sense because i've heard a lot of Mm -hmm. i'll agree i'll agree with you guys I've overall heard more celebration from Adventists on the second coming on the second coming than yeah. the oh resurrection. My we do so much, yeah. so, so much around so that. So there is celebration in Adventism, but it's on some different things. Uh, we celebrate Sabbath. We celebrate the second coming. Um, do we celebrate Sabbath? Sabbath is Sabbath is a. It's Sabbath a, is a happy day. Happy day. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. I mean, that's Dang. a celebration. I I know the reason I say that is because I think the second coming has this future reward and we don't know what to do with present day. And I think that's what Easter is so pow- why Easter is so powerful is because mm. if if Christ is alive, that means that that Jesus Christ can affect my life today. Like that, that that's that's one of the, like if 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 Jesus died and forgave and, and and through the process of him dying, it's it's this forgiveness of sins, it's the it's the bringing out of the reality of sin and showing who God is and who we are all mixed in this one thing and then and that God forgives us. That's that's the that's the 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 cross. Yeah. And then and then the problem is, is when you get to the resurrection, if you're if you're all about the forgiveness of sins, so that we can go to a good place, then that's going to severely hamper your celebration of the thing that happens next, which is that Jesus Christ is alive. And the reason that Jesus Christ is alive means so much is because if he's still dead in the grave, then we're still the same people that we were before. So we're forgiven, but we're 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 still the same people. Um, and we're going to make the same mistakes. Whereas the whole promise that Jesus gives before he leaves, I'm going to send my spirit into your, into your, uh, into the very midst of you, into your own lives so that it will change you from the inside out. That's the promise. So Jesus Christ being alive means the utter world to us, because if he's not, then he can't affect our lives. And so, which some Adventists then turn into perfectionist theology, but I mean the, 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 yeah, that's why, that's why it matters. But if, if, if it's a second coming, we only need to be forgiven. That's what the feeling is. And then, then you have to put in your own work to then become good enough to be accepted into the good place. That was a mouthful. <laughs> <You're welcome. laughs> I agree with all of it. What day is it? No, I loved it. 
I, I agree and I resonate and I have also felt that feeling that the that the the emphasis on the the one day coming of Jesus um, the the celebratory feeling as you said Sean um, that growing up that was far more celebrated than Jesus being alive than the whole hinge of Christianity itself which is which is pretty wild and I think to me in my own Christianity as I've gotten older and journeyed and learned and read I think that I've I've had to kind of backtrack a little bit and and go back to the foundation my my foundational Christian pillars and like the resurrection and like and really look at those and remind myself wow this is this is the, you know the foundation that everything else can be built on and that's where the beauty the beauty comes from the bottom up not the top down to me at least and yeah I mean I think we, there when are you say groups, bottom up top down what do you mean by that I mean for, like Christianity itself starts with the resurrection. You know, like it starts with the confession that Jesus is alive, that the tomb is empty. And, yeah, and for that's, me, that's, that's what started the Christian movement is what you're saying. Exactly. And, and I think for me, as I've gotten older and, and had experiences with other Christian families, um, and also done a lot of reading and, um, learning, I, I think that that has become so, so much more precious to me as I realize, wow, that's, that's everything. I can get a lot of other things wrong theologically, but if I get that, that wrong, then it doesn't matter. Like if I, if I miss that, yeah. you know? Yeah, I was going to say, too, like, for me, like, looking at that, I, I can agree that that became a very important point for me. Maybe not as much, like, yeah, emotionally, like, that that's important. But, like, I've told you guys, and I've talked about it before, like, connecting rationally or just having that connection, that's what leads to, mm -hmm. for me, emotionally open, opening up spiritually is having that grounding or that, that, that starting place. Like, I can feel grounded in this being true. Um, and that allows me to really explore that, you know, and how I express that with my relationship with God. And, and yeah, like everything hinges on Jesus rising from the dead. Like that, that all, like, that's where, like Anthony, you said, it starts with that. Um, and so like going through, like, you know, we've heard of the case for Christ with Lee Strobel and, and other talks that get into really knowing that that, that actually happened. Like mm -hmm. there's reason to believe that that happened. Yeah. And it's, sure. it's, and there's, there's substantial evidence for that. Um, and not trying to get this too much into head knowledge, but that, that is valuable. And for me, that was important going through that process and, yeah, and yeah. on my own, almost on my own, like getting to that point, like, man, this is where it starts. That's the beginning of, of why this matters and why life matters. You know, all the biggest questions start with that. And that worldview, the Christian worldview has to start there or it just gets messed up and it gets off focus. And um, I would say that Adventism would get off focus if we don't focus on that mm. first. Well, I think that's why it has gotten off focus, though. Like that, in, in essence, is because we have focused so much on behavior and, and things like that, that Easter, Easter in of itself, it has theological, we've already talked about this, but it has theological meaning, but little bearing on our actual, like, why, why it changes us, if that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's maybe in some ways we feel like it's, this is just me speculating, right? Mm -hmm. Is it beneath us? Cause it's too simple. Like that's Ooh, the simple yes. one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. A hundred percent. Because, you know, because a lot of our doctrine or the core unique tenets of Adventism tend to be in the, the depths yeah. of prophecy. Well, actually, and, and, and too, think about like, think about atonement, right? Like atonement <laughs> has been fought over for centuries and it's the most complicated, like you can make a complicated mess out of atonement, which in essence ends on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what good does, I mean, like once you get to this, once you get to the resurrection, it's like, oh, okay. So Jesus is alive. Yeah. Cool. Like, so, <laughs> so here's the thing too, like the short version of this, cause we could talk about all these different, like we'll eventually talk about different Adventist beliefs and doctrine. Yeah. But the short answer is this. Even if you find that to be valuable and important, and, and I do, I find a lot of the Avenus core doctrine and, and the, the pillars of the faith, I find them to be important. But ultimately, all they literally do is point back to the cross and its significance. Mm. Like that's that's all it comes down to. So if at any point it's they're important on their own, like if, if so, like we get to sabbath importance or we get to atonement or the significance of the sanctuary or any mm -hmm. of those points if at any point they become important on their own just as a source of identity for a church then it's literally useless so 
Yeah. So it yeah, has absolutely. to point back to the cross. And for me, it does. It, they all point back to the cross and add significance to it, just going back to the resurrection. But, but again, it's the, you don't even have to go down that route yet. Like you, can, you just need to start, and like you're saying, with Easter, just go back to the simple fact that Jesus is alive, he rose from the dead, and that because of that, everything else matters. Like my life well, yeah, matters. But we can say that all we want. You know, we can say Easter matters, but if we don't have a theological reason that it does, it doesn't mean much in essence, right? Now, but like before I even get into this, Eric, what did what what was your experience learning? Like, what was the what was the significance of Easter in your experience? Hmm. Um. Boy, uh, it's kind of a it's kind of a big question. Um. What What do you mean like, exactly? Like the meaning? Well, because in essence, like both both Anthony and I literally went to school and walked through like classes on systematic theology and things like that, which doesn't mean that we have, you know, the end all knowledge of it It just means that like we've had, we've done traditionally a lot more thinking into how all of this might be important and why it might work Mm -hmm. simply because of our education and and our, and our, and our jobs. And, and Sean, I know that you took quite a few like religion classes as well. So I'm sure that you had at least some direction into that, but Eric, you haven't had that, and that's not to say that you, that you're you're just like I guess again. I'm whenever just I ask ignorant. these questions, yeah, exactly. You're a lowly lay, lay person. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, no, my my reason to ask you, Eric, is because you have a valuable place in this conversation, and not having focused on on these things to the minutia that we have, yeah. meaning that you have experienced you have experienced what most people experience, and so like yeah, like what what did you feel was the significance? And if, and if you didn't feel like Mm -hmm. it was significant, that's fine. No, I mean, I think, I guess I, I I think in my experience, I would definitely rank like Easter was kind of below Christmas in terms of like, Oh wow. You know, spiritual significance. Well, you don't get presents for Easter. So well, that, I mean, you get candy. That's why 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 he ranked it below Christmas. That's (laughs) good. If I was, I mean, every kid's going to rank Easter below Christmas. (laughs) (laughs) Um, maybe I just still hang on to that. Uh, <laughs> I think, I think there's maybe some validity to kind of, I think Sean brought this up. Or maybe it was you, Jesse, of how in a way that like, there's so much theological depth you can go to with the cross and atonement and Christ's sacrifice and the East and Easter is kind of just like the happy ending mm-hmm. that we don't like dive into like the theological implications a lot other than like you know jesus is alive so now he can make a difference in our lives today Mm. that's kind of like you know i didn't really go too much deeper than that i feel like and if i'm remembering correctly my family we kind of usually kind of sabbath of easter weekend was kind of the spiritual day Mm -hmm. and then Easter morning, you know, when we were little, we'd have like Easter baskets and we'd do unwrap, like Easter egg hunt. And, uh, unwrap mm-hmm. the eggs under the tree. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> start mixing, start mixing go, everything. Go out we to had the to, chicken coop. If we wanted to eat dinner, we had to actually catch a wild bunny <laughs> and then uh, skin it. <laughs> skin it alive. And, uh, Roast find it. the eggs inside. <laughs> this is a total <laughs> random aside, but when your parents, when you're little and they're like, you know, changing your clothes, did they ever say like, skin the bunny? And you'd like, Put your hands up and that's, take off that's, your shirt. That's a very white. Absolutely not. That's a very nope. white people thing. That's extremely nope. white. That's a white nope. thing. No, that's, that's, all that's a that's a homeschool thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess when your dad's Canadian, you just I'm Canadian. Skin the bunnies all the time. But I'm black, and that's that's the whitest thing I've heard that's all week. That's a different. Yeah, but you're, you're from, Canadian and you're black, which is a totally different thing. Than you're being from the white streets Canadian. of Canada, Anthony. Exactly. <laughs> the streets of Red now, Alberta. <laughs> the streets the streets of rural alberta um so so the yeah in essence can, can, that, can i kind of sorry i'm interrupting you can i no i'm gonna let you talk <laughs> <laughs> all i was gonna say is that is a huge portion of this where if if you worship on sunday it's the culmination of the weekend if that makes sense. Right. So it naturally yeah. gains more significance in your psyche because this is the culmination. And we were talking a little bit before we started recording about like 
sort of the, the, the way stuff was treated early on in, in scripture, like early on in the church. And yeah, at least from my research, I'm sure there's other people who could put into this, uh, put more into this, but in essence, like most days were treated similarly to like, in, in essence, the, the, the churches, the, the, the people in church would gather together almost every single day, very early on. And then, but then Sunday, there was this different thing that they would do where they would not kneel down to pray because, because of what Jesus had done, they could come boldly before the throne of God. And so they didn't come in humility. They came in the reality that they are, they have been freed and forgiven. And because Jesus is alive, that means that they are, that, that them and God have this even tighter relationship than before. Like, I mean, there's so much significance in them not kneeling down to pray and so yeah, so like th- there was there was significance on that Sunday. They made it different on purpose because it meant something to them. But then Adventists, as soon as we get Saturday into the whole thing, now we cannot touch Sunday for fear of apostatizing yeah. and not being what you know what we're what we're literally named after. Yeah, and, and I think so. Two things. First thing, Sean, back to something you said that I found was really poignant was. Um, I think there is a pers- there has been historically within the Adventist Church, um, and I'm interested in if you agree with this or not. But like a sort of perspective that we have a unique identity that that is separate and different from the rest of other Christian churches, and our unique identity is 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 to call is to call the world back to specific truths about God and the Bible that have been lost. And so I think because of that. Um, I think there what I think because of that there has been like a, a de-emphasization or de-emphasizing that's way less complicated of a word um, a de-emphasizing of kind of some of the basic baseline Christian truths which are like Jesus is alive and because of, when your whole identity is wrapped up in you know that's what the other churches you know focus on our focus is the second coming our focus is the health message our focus is Sabbath keeping you know not disparaging those but saying because we viewed our identity as different. I think there has been a sort of a, a de-emphasizing of sort of the basic, you know, Christian, yeah, Christian truths it may and have, realities. It may have not even happened intentionally. It just happened organically as yeah, we felt exactly. that we had a specific remnant message. There's yeah. another topic we need to talk about. Um, yeah. The idea that, you know, Jesus is returning soon, so we've got to tell this message quickly. Right. And with that, I maybe original sense of urgency that the, the founding fathers and mothers of Adventism felt like, oh yeah, this is, we need to focus on these spots. And so, oh, the other church is already covering the resurrection. Yes, we agree with that as Christians, but maybe that's not the the focus right now. Um, and maybe right. that just happened naturally. I, it probably wasn't intentional to, yeah, I think it did. to do that because, you know, all Adventists have always agreed and taught the resurrection and said it's good, but but is it something that we celebrate? Is it something that we we really value as a, as a core of our identity as, as Christians. Um, yeah. and so that's, I think that's what we're trying to figure out there is, is, are we really doing that well? And should we be focusing on that more? Should that yeah. be the start, yeah. maybe the starting point? So if we're going to talk about the other pieces, if we're going to say the other parts of Adventism matter, it's got to start with the resurrection Yeah, and, 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 and it's got oh, to yeah. branch out from there. And if it holds up, then great. But if not, then it's it's a waste of time. Yeah, I I think when you, I think maybe this expresses what I have felt in going to some non-denom churches. When you go to those churches, you realize their entire identity is wrapped up in the resurrection. Their entire identity as a church is wrapped up in Jesus rising from the dead in the empty tomb. And I think, <clears throat> and that's sort of a, you know, a, you know that it's like a, it's like they boil down to the essential of Christianity, and they're like, "This is the one thing we'll stand on." You know, mm. w- uh, whereas, you know, for us, as you said, the Adventist feeling and movement was kind of birthed out of that that calling to be a remnant, you know, community that had a, a specific mission for the world, and so I, which is not that mission. I mean, which is not that message of, of the resurrection. It's it's specifically different, and so I think because of that, as you're saying, unintentionally, just throughout history. Our church just never felt called to specifically emphasize that message. Whereas when you go to, you know, say Elevation Church, North Carolina, you know, church home in S- Seattle, both mega churches, um, you know, like they see their whole identity as the resurrection. So I, I think it's pretty striking. And I think that's maybe the reason why for me, as I felt walking into those spaces, I feel like, oh, wow, like this church really values this 
because it's their whole identity. Like it's everything, you know, it's mm. when it's everything you are, it, it's, it's communicated through the culture, through the way people talk, through what is spoken about up front, yeah. you know? Jesse, I think you connected it back to, you, you briefly mentioned perfectionism as being an issue or the idea of like, um, just like you need to be a certain level before God and even like an idea of like what we should do here on earth. And, and, and Anthony, what you just mentioned, like maybe sometimes it feels like the, the celebration of the resurrection is an afterthought is because I do know for sure that mm-hmm. there are Adventists that fear leading down a path of over fixating on the, re- the resurrection to the point where it leads to thinking that I I don't have to do anything. Like I'm, I'm yeah. saved by grace. Therefore, the one yeah. and, always and, fear. Yeah. and and one one area, one author that I've always liked is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Um, he 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 does this um, book on, and he has a concept on uh, cheap grace mm-hmm. versus um, I don't remember if he calls it costly grace or there's a, there's another word he uses, but but he goes through that concept of cheap grace, and it's really powerful in seeing like. Yes, there is a certain call to action. Like in your heart, things will change. You will be transformed when you actually truly accept what Jesus did for you and what the Holy Spirit can do in your life. Like that's, a, that's something that happens in a Christian's life. If mm-hmm. nothing happened to you, then what's the point, right? Here and now, there's yeah. something that needs to happen. And so it's weird because it's funny and almost ironic, Jesse, that we as Adventists fear going down that path of maybe like Christian apathy. Like, oh yeah, Jesus has saved me. Mm -hmm. And I'm good to go. I don't need to do anything else. But at the same time, we're, we're going from one extreme to the other and we're missing the resurrection altogether. And so where is the grace at all? So there, it's still grace. Yeah. And, and there's nothing, there's nothing to start, kickstart the idea of living a better life, a more holy life, whatever you want to call it. And so the whole even idea of being made more perfect and, and all the ideas that go into that, that would not exist without the cross and the, the grace that we've been saved by, right? That's the yeah. starting point. Like that can't even exist, that conversation of, hey, what is God calling me to do better today? Like what, is, what path is God leading me down today? That wouldn't exist without that, that resurrection, the initial part of it. So, well, and, and, and I think you hit, on, you hit the nail on the head when you said that there's this fear of, oh no, if... if we, yeah, if we hyper-focus on the resurrection, then we won't focus on behavior afterwards. Yeah. But it's so interesting because the whole idea of Jesus' death is the fact that we could not, we were not the people that we were made to be, you know, to the point where we were so evil and so messed up that we literally killed God. And it's all about God's character in that, how he comes, how he offers his life, how he forgives, how he doesn't come back with vengeance to destroy us. Like that's, it's, it's all about his character, which is hilarious because then all of a sudden afterwards it becomes a focus on my own behavior and my character when it's never been that, like that God's love, his kindness, his compassion, his goodness, his mercy, his justice, all of that is just simply who he is. And, and I can't match that. And so the, the, the focus on, on, on perfectionism gets really crazy, but it, it, it goes straight back to Easter because we don't know what to do with that. If we if we focus too much on it, oh no, we're never gonna act differently. But if we don't focus on it enough, then we don't we we don't have anybody who can change us. Yeah. Mm. And so it creates this theological dilemma, <laughs> which is really weird that that we get stuck in that. And yet it also makes a ton of sense of how we got there. Um, but yeah. So as I've been like processing through this as we've been talking, would a maybe a healthy reaction to all of this, like if we recognize that we need to be making the resurrection more important in all of our churches, you have to think about like with church history, that's where Christianity starts, right? Yeah. Christianity starts with the resurrection. That's what leads to Pentecost. That's what leads to to the spirit moving and leading to growth. And, and that's what leads to affirming through Paul, Peter, others, like affirming what it means to be a Christian. So when people asked and wanted to know what were the beliefs that define Christianity, that those all came after the resurrection, mm-hmm. right? So in some ways, shouldn't Easter almost in some ways be like our reset as Christianity and like that moment to stop and celebrate, just make it simple, make it the celebration. And from there, just like the early church did, look at and say, okay, now what? 
like that upper room experience, like waiting for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, right? So once you've celebrated and you, you've bought into to the resurrection and just realized that's what matters most here, yeah. then you get into like, okay, you're planning outreach or evangelism. You're planning what like sermon series to do, what to focus on with your church, what our global church should focus on, whatever you're, you're trying to get into. It should start from that kind of ground zero. And then if we get into topics like, oh yeah, Sabbath still matters, like Sabbath matters, or um, other parts of our faith, like as Adventists, these things matter. Well, it should have started from that celebration of Easter. Would that change our mindset? Do you think that's where we should we should start? Does that make sense? Like like a refresh? Yeah, like you're saying, you're in essence saying that this started a whole global movement, and what if every year it was the ref- the refresh for yeah across the world? Yeah, I, I mean, I I think that to some degree that is how it's treated. Like it's the culmination or the starting point for some people's years, uh, you know, their their theological or their uh, sermonic years and things like that, mm. um, in other churches. But for us, it's it, it tends to be an afterthought. But I, I agree with you. Like, uh, I I totally do agree with with that being the the restart. But at the same time, I, I think that there there if there's no personal meaning to what the resurrect what Easter is, then we as Adventists will never really celebrate it well. I'm also skeptical because I tend to be a little more cynical, more skeptical. I'm, I think I'm skeptical that, um, I think it's really hard. I think it's really hard to shift people's mindsets on what is valuable within their religious framework and how, how to express that because it's so learned. Like so much of it, as we talked about earlier is like cultural, you know, like, and, and also just an aside on the, the cultural thing, you know, like, I feel like that's a little bit of BS to me because, you know, the same people who like Easter Sunday, you're in church and, you know, like they're not excited. It's, it's real somber. I'm like, I want to see you at like your favorite sports teams, like game or like at at your baby's birthday shower. Like you're stoked. You're excited. See, I, I think that that's a little bit of a fallacy. You think so? Yeah, because it's like that literal that literal statement has been used to guilt people into excitement in church for a long time. I've heard that from Adventists. That's fair. You know, it's like, oh yeah, you guys you guys will go in wind and rain and snow to your favorite sports team, and but you won't show up to church. And I'm like, that's because what sports offers is genuine, tangible, felt meaning in that moment. You feel and like the resurrection of, doesn't offer genuine, tangible, felt meaning. I'm saying that people don't understand why it has that meaning for them. Does that make sense? Like, ah, so, so when I go to a sports game, it's right yeah. there in front of me. My team either wins or loses. My team is doing right. well, then I'm excited and happy if they're not doing well, or if we're coming back from far behind, like the Patriots when they were down 28-3 and then came back and won the Super Bowl. Incredible. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm a Patriots fan. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, just a, a caveat, before Tom Brady, I was a Patriots fan because my dad's from New England. So, I'd like anyways, the new Tom uh, Brady jersey. Uh, oh, man, I'm interested to see what he's going to do there. Uh, so <laughs> anyways, <laughs> before you goad me into this... Uh, <laughs> The, the, my point is, is that while you're there, it's tangible felt meaning. Yeah. Right. So then when someone's yelling up front, which is, I, I would say that, the, the, so in both churches, in, in, in the, in the somber Adventist church and in the excited over the top charismatic church, I'm saying that as if those are the only two churches in existence, they're not, but yeah. let's just, let's just use those as, as examples. Someone is either saying, well, Jesus is alive, you know, and you're like, yeah, cool. I, <laughs> I know that theologically. Or someone in the other church is like, Jesus is alive. And that's, you know, and you're just like, okay, dude, chill. Right. <laughs> like, well, I'm, like either one, it's, it, if it doesn't have personal meaning to me, then, yeah. then why would it? And I, I mean, like, obviously I would love to talk through the theology of it, but I mean, it just in a, in a, in a split second, if we're, if like we, we should probably talk about why it has meaning to people theologically or else Adventists will never get it. I, I, exa- that's literally I'm what I, I'm saying that like we should yeah, do that right now. Exactly. I, I totally agree. Um, and I, but I, I, I guess what I, what I was trying to hit on is not even, but, but also what I was trying to hit on is, uh, you know, what, when, what I feel like when, when we have historically gone in one direction, I don't think it's like cruel or manipulative or guilt trippy to say like, we can move a little bit in the other direction. And, and that would be healthy and that would be great. Yeah. It, it, yeah. You know, it, to an extremely somber person to say like, Hey, you know, like, let's get at the root cause of this. Like, you know, are you, you like, is it, is it, is it just cultural? Is there reason behind that? You know, like just, just like to those, you know, extremely charismatic spaces, you know, maybe they could come down a few notches, you know, 
but I agree that in order to for it to even be meaningful, like you have to understand why it's meaningful and you have to theologically understand. And I, I, where I began this was I feel like I'm skeptical about Adventism at large getting understanding deeply um, Easter because of all the reasons we've mentioned, because of identity, because of history. And we haven't even gotten into like the fact that we come from an Arminian tradition, you know, like we're a little more like unsure about salvation and you know, like there's a little bit of insecurity about stuff like that. So I, I think, I, I think I'm a, uh, not trying to be Debbie Downer, but I feel like, uh, it's, it's difficult. It's real difficult to move the cultural dial over, you know? So, I mean, and Jesse used the sports analogy, like you don't see like the coach of a team or like the broadcaster coming out and telling the whole group, like, come on, you guys should be more excited for the team right now. Like, like, and the reason for that, how, how absurd would that be at a sport? Like, you already know the people that are coming know why they're there. They're excited yeah. for that team. They're, they've bought in, right? And so theoretically, right, the people that are at church, they've bought into this message. But it sounds like what we're trying to get at is maybe the message is skewed or the focus needs to be somewhere else. What message so have they cre- bought into? I think that's so, the question. So it's trying to unify that message towards the resurrection and yeah. creating buy-in to why that should be the main focus um, and why you well, should be the, excited the, about it. The grand narrative of Scripture, to try and encapsulate this as quickly as possible, is in essence, God made us to be like as human as possible, like the, the best humans. In, we would be so good to each other and love each other so well. We didn't do any of that. We became horribly destructive and evil. We destroyed the entire world through our societies and our, our issues and our problems. And it wasn't just a breaking of God's law that, that caused that. It was just like we're horrible, messed up people at, at our core. And that's and the cross is this beautiful coming together of God and humanity, where God and human in Jesus, we see like the evil evil of humanity like just played out on, on Jesus. And we see how Jesus as the the best human ever, as well as who like literal representation of God, the image of God, n- not just the image of God in human, but, but actual God, how both of those parties react to this, right? And so when we, when we see Jesus on that cross, it is the, the, the fullness of evil and the fullness of love displayed once and for all, right? Yeah. But then when we get to the resurrection, and that, that's why like it can seem like the cross is the end of it, end of the story. And the I think was it you, Eric, who said the the resurrection is the happy ending, right? Yeah. But the resurrection is literally like okay, now we saw all of that on display, but we're not any different. We're still the same beings it, that killed that killed Jesus. It's the beginning. And so the 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 key thing is that our our sinful messed up selves, as Paul would say it have to die the death that we were going to die anyways. We die that symbolically through Jesus Christ. But if we just die, then okay, it's over. We're done. But we're raised to new life with Jesus Christ, which inherently means that now we have been reborn. We have a new opportunity, a second chance. And I love how, uh, how Paul says in, in Romans 6, uh, he says, for if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin because you died, you're, you're, you're dead. Uh, now, if you have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that he will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him, which means that everything that that causes us to have any sort of powerlessness against the the forces of this world because we're afraid of death and what that might bring mm. uh that has gone um and then when we come to the the end of this he says then uh we must consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to god in jesus christ which means that our new life is actually jesus christ living and dwelling in us mm. and if that isn't the core narrative then what we end up with is that jesus christ is cool, like he's alive. And now we have to then through our own effort and through our own, you know, our, if our, through our own effort and through our own, what's the word? Our bootstraps. Good works. We have to make this all happen for ourselves so that we'll be acceptable to him. But the reality is that he loved us so much that now he, he not only died for us, but now he's alive and wants to live in us in a practical, tangible way in every single day of our lives, yeah. which means he wants to be with you and talk with you and be with you. And, and if, and if you don't have that personal Jesus, because he's alive and they're with you, 
then it doesn't mean anything. Yeah, that's what brings the if transformation. You can yell, Jesus is alive. Yeah, because we get we do yeah, get into like, the trap. The of- we do get into the trap of how you transform is by thinking about the guilt in your heart. Like, oh man, if I, I should be doing this better, you shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. Um, like we get into that trap instead of just fixating on the combination of the cr- what the cross and the resurrection does. Like the combination. See, and is, I, is it? Is it fixating on it, or is it just being with the with Jesus who is alive? Like, I mean, obviously we have to know the theological truth, but that's the thing that gets me about the resurrection, is Jesus is alive and with us. Like, he says, I'm going to send my spirit into into you. Like, that's, I'm going to dwell in you. Yeah. And, and if that isn't the, 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 the change, like, Easter is such a celebration for me in my own heart, because it means that Jesus is literally with me, living in me, just, like, slowly and, and gently transforming me into who, and I'm never going to reach the, the perfection that some people want to, want to reach, but I, I will never be the same because of Jesus Christ, because yeah. he's actually with me, not, not because of the, of some, like also because of some thing that happened in the past, but also because he's currently now in this moment with me because he's actually alive. Yeah. yeah. So as much as I agree with you, I think some people would argue back and maybe Maybe I'm arguing some Adventists might argue back that, oh, that's too vague when it comes to transformation. And we want we want tangible like this is what will happen. Yeah. And this is what like if you do this, this is what you will see uh, from from those that are truly following Christ. And I think it gets into that realm of like, oh, if you just say like, oh, I'm saved by Jesus, like his like and, and his spirit is living in me. All the things that you said, Jesse, some people look at that and say, yeah, that sounds nice, but. But is that really, do you really see transformation taking place there? And some people are saying, oh, I should see tangible evidence. I should know you by your fruits and get into that, mm-hmm. that conversation. And it, it, it might get off the whole purpose of what Jesus was doing. Is well, it, the, is but it, the fallacy is, is when an Adventist looks over at some, some person on the other end, on the other end of the spectrum, who's like, yeah, like I love, Jesus loves me and everything is good. And then there's nothing different in their life. We look at them and we're like, oh, that's why we don't believe that. It's like, well, mm. they don't even believe the reality of the gospel. Yeah. We're over here just like, yeah, like, you know, I, I'm doing my best to keep what God wants me to do. And I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to, to eat healthy and live the way God called me to live. And it's like, but you're just trying to modify your behavior. You don't, you don't believe the gospel either. You don't believe that Jesus is alive and tangible and present in your life right now. Just as much as the other person doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, like there's would a certain guys... level. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, would you guys agree that Adventism in general is more focused on sanctification than justification? Ooh, Ooh definitely. The big words. Yeah, those wow. are big the, words. Uh, the big Adventist terms. Well, they're not. They're, they're Paul, yeah, I mean, I, I get what I mean, you're saying. I mean, they're not Adventists, but yeah, but they're, they're, yeah the, the, Paul used those words, justification, meaning you've been declared righteous just by decree of God. Like, I, you are righteous because of... of uh, everything that's happened. But then, then there's the second thing, sanctification, which is being made more like Jesus. Yeah. Cause I, I, I feel like in, in my Adventist experience, we kind of are like, yes, we're saved by faith. That's yeah. amazing. But what are we doing now? Like we need to be better. We need to be set apart from the world. Mm. And with that kind of hyper focus on behavioral and, changing of the heart which is all good kind of stuff to 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 focus on i think we kind of de-emphasize kind of you know but the resurrection in that the language eric is using is very intriguing to me (laughs) (laughs) say more about that anthony what what do you mean well because i think it's reflective of what i think a lot of people experienced a lot of non ministry folk like the three of us uh, experience like the, a lot of the language they heard, like all the language that you just use, I think, um, uh, is, yeah, it's indicative, I think. And I, I would agree that sanctification. And I think as Could, I briefly met, sorry, yeah, you go. No, no, I'm just, I'm just kind of thinking like Adventism in general is so much like less evangelistic in the gospel message mm-hmm. compared to other denominations. At least, I mean, in, in my, per, in my, uh, in my view, I guess, or my perception. Cause like, you know, when we have evangelism series, it's like revelation and Daniel and about Bible prophecy and Jesus second coming. Like, I don't, maybe how many other denominations 
try to convert other denominations. <laughs> right. That's well, like, that's maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's my perception. We're kind of built th- on that. Like yeah, our thing is like we try to harvest the we other got Christians Catholic. into our camp, you know, and like because <laughs> we have the right doctrine, and like if I can got convince you one. that the seventh day is the Sabbath, and that you know, the, the health message and and the second coming and say the dead, like that's like our thing. That's, that's is we try to biblical truth all like, of a sudden. Yeah, if someone else, if a if a Baptist becomes Adventist. It's like, huge. We want to baptize them, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Like, and you know, I always thought it was kind of weird because I'm like, if you've already well, been like baptized in the family of Christ, like why do you need to be baptized into Adventism? I mean, there's this thing called well, profession Adventism of faith. Because the Church of Biblical Prophecy, which we need to talk about more. Well, there's profession of <laughs> also, faith. Also, I just like, want to say this. Catholics, Catholic converts are like, just any convert, it's like, you know, it's like I got a, I caught a nice, uh, you know, f- like, let's say a foot long fish, right? But like, this if you catch going? a Catholic, if you catch a Catholic, it's just <laughs> oh. like, dang, we got them not oh, only yeah. from Protestantism, That's we got true. them from Catholicism. Heck yes. Well, then we, we definitely had to baptize them because they just got sprinkled. You know, that's a whole, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah a whole then, then we actually thing. have And then the to, irony yeah. is, is that Catholics make the best Adventists because they're so used to <laughs> oh. the rule system. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they make the absolute best We need to talk about that. Okay, too, so really quick. Um this th- this could almost be another conversation because it gets into another unique thing I, I found out that Adventism does that I'm not sure other denominations do okay. is that when we baptize, we baptize not only um, like into Christianity, but into church membership. Right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. yeah. Well, which it's, is okay. Okay. Which, it's not, it's technically connected in the sense that, that policy wise if they're connected, the next thing that we do is immediately invite them into church membership. That being said, it you don't. It's not. If you if you separated it out by a month, which is probably a better idea, it's not. The retention technically rate technically illegal. Oh, are you saying that because that's what you've done personally? You want to just air all your dirty laundry? I will. I will give you no further comment. <laughs> do you make Do you make them read the baptismal vows? No, because that's like that's like the traditional. Like, I also read don't. the ba- like have them read if, the baptismal vows and, and say like they're I baptized follow because they're baptized because they are symbolizing that they have they have united themselves with Christ in His death and in His resurrection, and they're inviting the Spirit of God to live now and I, dwell in them. And change them. I so agree with you, Jesse, but I don't think that's what our church, church does. <laughs> y- yeah. I don't think no, we saying, do yeah, that. But I'm just, I'm just saying that I think it's completely wrong and doesn't make any sense. And but I'm no, saying I, that's what we. I'll do. see you on the other side, that... not having done. Wait, wait, when you guys <laughs> became church members, you had to go into the basement and and skin a bunny, right? <laughs> it was a gerbil was that, for me. So was, was that just me? Guinea pig. <laughs> Actually, I had, I had to bring my favorite dog. As, oh, a, no. as an act of, <laughs> as an act of uh, showing how dedicated I was. Yikes. As a dog owner, that's so. That's the saddest thing. <laughs> okay. Um, oh wow. Word. What a great, what a great path that went down. So, okay. Here, I'm gonna say. Here's my last thing. Just real quick. Here's my last thing. As for Easter, I definitely think that we have to re we have to re engage with what Easter means theologically, like for the personal person. And as we re engage with that, I think it will shift and change the way that we interact with it on a on a whole church level, uh, yeah. because then we will actually un- understand the meaning behind why we might be excited well and said. not just be the hype person yelling "Christ is risen" and everybody yeah. saying "Yeah," but not knowing why. Or on the other hand, as Adventists, being the people who are like. Jesus is alive, and then all of us thinking legalistically that we now need to be different um, in in through our own actions. Yeah. So, I, I that that's my two cents into. I don't think that we should necessarily change practices. Uh, maybe we sh- maybe a few as as part of it, but like, I mean, it, it's got to come from the heart. It can't just be hype. Yeah, I, I would connect that even to what Eric said with you know why why is it that our evangelism is on those specific topics, and. I think those topics are fine and, you know, they're, the topics aren't bad. It's just what should be the beginning? Like if we're introducing people to Christianity, 
which if we're doing worldwide evangelism, many times that's what it is. I mean, if it's other denominations, then you have those separate conversations, I guess, but you should still start even with the other denominations. Mm-hmm. You want to start with the cross, right? It, like get, get your grounding together and say, we agree on this. This is the most important thing. This is where all of this starts and where it matters, like with the resurrection of Jesus. But, but with all of that, you would have to say, okay, this is why this next path matters. Like, like this is why the next thing matters. So if we're going to get into those other things like prophecy, it's because those things point to Jesus. Hmm. Like those things matter yeah. because they point to Jesus. The, the second coming matters because it points to what Jesus already did. Like we have that excitement because we already have the celebration of the resurrection. Like that's, you know, like the whole idea of like the war has already been won. There's still battles going on. So it's like we should be experiencing that victory every day, that celebration every day. Like, look, the war's won. Like we're just, we're excited for the second coming, but we already have that victory. And we're recognizing that more and more each day. Mm. So yeah, there's, I think it would change how we do outreach, how we do evangelism if we, if we, rooted ourselves there from the beginning and then allowed that to inform, okay, where should we go from here with what we teach? What, what should be, what should be important? Yeah, I agree. I think with Adventism, especially there's a, we kind of have our identity in knowing all these intricate doctrinal, um, complexities, um, that kind Mm -hmm. of says apart from the rest of Christianity. And I think that, um, if we can take more advantage of Easter to kind of reset ourselves in the the fact that Jesus has um, conquered death and conquered sin and for us um, kind of get back to basics. I think that's a, uh, I think that's something that our church culture needs more of. Yeah. Anthony, any uh, closing thoughts? Oh, somehow this always happens where I'm the one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always want to be, I always want to end on a positive note. I feel as if I, but then I don't. (laughs) I feel, this is what I think. These are the things that I think. I think because of our history, I think because of our identity, and I think because of our mission or what we feel is our mission in the world, it's very difficult for us to connect as an, as a denomination to what one of my favorite authors, Timothy Keller calls uh the anti-religion christianity it's the it's the idea of religion flipped upside down everything that jesse was saying uh earlier like the idea that christianity is not the is is not a a an outline for how to get to god somehow by working harder but instead it's the opposite it's that god calls me son he calls us family and um that that the the direction isn't me me up to him trying to get there somehow, but it it's fr- it's from him down that he comes he comes to me that home comes home comes here home comes and finds me when I'm lost, and uh, that's what Christianity is and and I think that as because of our history, it's so easy for us to fall into religion, it's so easy for us to fall into a legalistic framework of how to relate to God. Um, and I think that when we do that, we, we lose uh, sight of why Easter matters at all. But I, I think if, if we, as you, as you guys are all saying, um, if, if we uh, all c- commit and connect to and, um, you know, aim towards um, the idea of, of, of the God who comes and finds me, then I think, um, yeah. I think there's, I think there's a, a, a reclamation that we can do within the church. Um, but, I, but I think that's really hard. And I, I don't know. I, I think I'm not, I'm not overly optimistic, to be honest, of Adventism at large doing that. I think it's so ingrained. I think it's so ingrained culturally to view God in the Bible and, and um, our identity in the ways that we do that it's, it's really difficult. And so I, I just think it starts personally uh, with each one of us, like, Re- remembering and reconnecting with the story of ourselves and reminding ourselves in our own hearts, Jesus is alive and that matters to me personally. So those are a lot of words, but well, I have to make a all... quick, yeah, that's uh, I need to make a quick correction from our, our last episode. Um, I said that the Smurfs lived in tree houses <laughs> and uh, I was wrong. They actually live in mushrooms. 
That's what I thought. Wow. And so I just, I, I, I need to call myself out that, you know, we, we've made mistakes in uh, past episodes, but that, that's, that's just unexcusable. I, I really, I really have no, you have no, no reason for, for why, why that should have happened. So I apologize to our listeners. Um, it won't happen again. We appreciate that. I, I hope you can trust us someday soon. I uh, as I was actually listening to that episode a second ago, and I was uh, I was I thought of that one-off episode of Digimon where they go to uh, Digimon the animated series where they go to the the, the tree fort uh, people. Oh, Digimon Frontier. Digimon Frontier, yes. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna cut all this. <laughs> Hey, all you cool cats and kittens out there. Just want to thank Eric Edstrom, our producer, for getting the I Haven't Watched the Tiger King Yet award from us here at the podcast. Go watch the Tiger King, Eric. We love you. Thanks for being a producer. All right, we'll see you guys next time on Seeking What They Saw.